My name is Arthur Jones II. I'm a producer for CBS This Morning in Washington, D.C., and I'm also the host of Max Out Time with AJ2, which is a self-entitled show which highlights success stories in order to max them out. Um, we'll get into what my show does in a second, but essentially you probably are thinking, what's a podcast? Why podcasting? And I wanted to give you guys this presentation essentially because I want to help you all be able to tell your own stories, own your own narratives. In 2020, it's a crazy year. There's a lot going on. And sometimes you might need a creative outlet. Sometimes the school may want to put out different uh, platforms that students are doing. Um, and podcasting is the new wave. Um, most people have just gotten into it within the last few years. It's been around only about 15, 16 years or so. And I've hosted a podcast for the last uh, three to five years now, um, going back to college. And um, so just keep in mind, this is a, a perfect way for you to tell your own stories, tell stories for a community organization, for your school, whatever the um, outlet may be. Uh, it's just a great way to do those things. Um, so a podcast essentially is a digital audio program that's made available through the internet. Um, where you can either download it or it's made available automatically for subscribers. So essentially it's just an audio file that you can go ahead and onto the internet, download, and either has music or talking on it or a combination of the two. And you listen to it, whether with headphones on your phone, whatever the case may be. And actually here are a couple examples of just prominent podcasts that I put together. Um, <clears throat> so, Serial, which is one of the most popular podcasts, it's an investigative award-winning podcast and it's an episodic narrative. So over one season, multiple episodes go through and tell one story. Um, so it's like a non-fiction story, sometimes a, a um, fictional story, but these are all real stories that are told throughout one season through multiple episodes. Uh, New York Times does the daily podcast, which is more of a news, news show that tells the top news stories pretty much every day, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. They're uploaded um, through their site and New York Times reporters and producers do this podcast every day on just the top news stories and the hottest topics in news, uh, mostly politics and things like that. And then there's also interview based podcasts, which are similar to mine where um, there's, you can have multiple hosts, you can have one singular host. So All The Smoke podcast is one of the best podcasts that came out last year. And it's a sports podcast conducted by two former NBA champions, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Uh, they were both uh, played for the Golden State Warriors. They played for a number of different teams throughout their careers and they talked to athletes and they interviewed them. And then T.I. actually, he has one of the top podcasts out right now where it's called um, Expeditiously, and you can see T.I., he, he um, capitalized it in the middle to give his spin on it. Um, so the rapper does like sit down interviews at his music studio with entertainers where he tries to, what he says, push the culture forward. Um, so it's actually similar to my podcast in the sense that um, the latest series that I'm doing on my show is called Education Reboot, um, <clears throat> where I do interviews with teachers, educators, students, um, everyone within that field on their experiences during the coronavirus pandemic um, and how it has changed our schools at this time. So one of my most recent interviews, which I'll give you guys just um, about 30, 45 seconds to watch this clip was with KIPP DC um, arts and technology teacher, Azel Prather Jr. Uh, he's like a preschool, pre-K, PE teacher at KIPP right now. And he's an award-winning educator. Actually, last year, Ellen brought him on to her show for his work with young students. These are three, four, and five-year-old students. And he did a self-care day with his students. He brought community barbers, community nail techs, and beauticians in to do his students' hair. And you know, these are Black kids from Ward 8 who he was trying to make them feel good about themselves. And essentially this year with the pandemic, he's not able to see them. He's a PE teacher, like I said. So he's doing like Zoom jumping jacks and things like that with them. And he's trying to do his best. Um, and I just asked him like, why do you do the things that you do? How come you care about your students so much? And if you guys can see. How, how do you teach so much young students your favorite 
facing so much right now about balancing mental, physical, emotional health, and all of those emotions? Um, f- first for me, I, I got to show it. So um, I, I got to make sure I'm working. I got to make sure I'm eating the right way. Um, I had to start tapping in to do yoga so I can talk to them about yoga and meditation. So I had to do those things first in order for them to believe it. And, and to have that translate to them, it, it becomes a becomes a little easier because they know they know they want to feel good about themselves, but they just don't know that they want to feel good about themselves. So for them to, uh, when I tell them to hold up their muscle and, and tap your muscle and give your muscle a kiss, I'm like, give your muscle a kiss. Like you love your body. You love yourself. Um, that was a, a small clip from a recent interview I did with him. The next week I did an interview with two young seventh grade students in, in Flushing, New York. And um, actually those two students were telling me about their Zoom difficulties, the distractions that they have um, while going to school. They were telling me about how they've had family members who contracted the virus. Both their parents were teachers. You know, So everyone's going through this pandemic in, in one way or another, whether you're a teacher, a, a school principal, or you know, a fifth grade student. So I've been doing the, that series for the past couple of months, uh, one-on-one interviews. And um, the next portion of starting a podcast, um, right before you do anything, you have to kind of know what your why is. So in life or any project that you're doing, essentially you have to have that starting point. Why are you starting a podcast? Why? do you want to tell these stories? Why does these story, do these stories matter? The, the second portion of that question is a podcast is a service. It's something that you're giving to someone else, right? It's something that you're providing to someone else, someone in need, uh, someone who needs that mental therapy or who needs that creative balance to get them through the day. Right, so this service is something that you've got to think very hard about. What are you giving back to your audience? It's not about yourself. It's not all about okay. I'm going to turn on a microphone. I'm going to talk about what I did today, or you know who um, who won the game last night. It's more about what you can give, what type of tools, what type of keys you can give back to someone else. So whether you're doing it for your school, a community organization, a charity, you have to find why you're doing this. It's, it's not about yourself, it's more about your audience and your community of listeners, uh, because it really can be an outlet that benefits people along the way. Um, so I like to break it down really, really easily, just making a, an outline for your podcast, for your show, just like in school, like you're writing your papers, just make it simple. Your five W's, who, what, when, where, why, and sometimes how. So I made up like a, a mock podcast. Is there anybody out there that wants to read the summary? Can you see the summary at the bottom? Unmute. I can see it and I can read it. Perfect. Thank you, Jayla. Each for the World podcast highlights teachers who are changing the lives of at-risk youth in public schools. Jack Reed will conduct one-on-one interviews with educators who are positively impacting some of the world's most vulnerable students. In this Spotify podcast, Reed and his guests aim to provide today's teachers with their keys to success. Broadcast from the Sony Studios in St. Louis, Missouri, this hour-long show is recorded live every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 6.30 Central Time. Jayla, who, what is the what in this podcast? The second W, what, what is the what? Uh, teachers who are changing lives. Okay, Um, how I wrote it down was Reed, Jack Reed does one-on-one interviews with teachers who are thriving in education in order to, you know, change lives, like you said, for at-risk students. Can someone give me- Before you you move on, can I just compliment um, her on her speaking? She sounds just like a commentator. I mean, that was very good. (laughs) <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jayla. I might have to give you give you the mic and let you do the rest of the, the presentation. Uh, but is there is there anybody else who wants to tell me or give a shot at the why? No right or wrong answers, just based off that summary. I'll do my best. Um, 
uh, uh, to like try and just, I mean, there's the one that says, uh, aim to provide today's teachers with their keys to success. Like, I guess just trying to inspire teachers on ways to influence your students for the better. Yeah. Maybe just, you know, spread the positive stories going around. As that's exactly how I would describe it. Essentially, um, the podcast aims to enhance learning communities. It aims to enhance educators, teachers, students, and their livelihoods, right? If we can get these students, kindergarten all the way up, um to have better teachers and better learning environments they'll become better people to me that's what the why is now if this was your show and, and duke ellington had a teach for the world style show it may be a little bit different y'all are an art school it could be to make better musicians um you just you make it what it, what you want to make it um there's always the sometimes how that's why i threw in the spotify podcast a lot of podcasts are sponsored by different outlets. So Spotify actually does Michelle Obama's new uh, podcast. So it's, she's she's sponsored by Spotify. I think Jamel Hill is sponsored by, by Spotify. And, you know, they're uploaded through Spotify, but then it goes through all these other platforms, Apple, Google, uh, Stitcher, all the our iHeartRadio, all the podcast places you can get these top podcasts. And my podcast is on all of these as well. Um, it's not sponsored by Spotify or Pandora or anything like that, but it's on all of these platforms and you can download it there or get it automatically for any subscribers. So that would be an outline of a podcast. You know your why, you know who, what, when, where, how, um, and you have a concrete example of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Here's, here's the crucial part outside of these portions. You got to trust the process. Now, the Philadelphia 76ers is a basketball team, and they coined this phrase a few years ago when they had terrible, terrible teams for years and years and years, and they kept getting the number one pick in the draft. But they trusted the process, and now they have a formidable team that's always top three or four in the NBA. The reason being is because they had bad teams, and they went through some bad struggles, some, some tough times for a few years, and then they trusted the process after year after year of struggling and they made it through. The reason why I put this stat up here is because more than 40% of podcasts are abandoned within one year. I've been doing this for five years and the first one, two and three, and even the fourth year, I struggled a lot and, and wasn't able to do as much as I wanted to accomplish. But you have to have to know your why what is important about this show and have a strong and effective plan. Uh, three ways to trust the process, in my opinion, would be to have faith, stay dedicated, and be consistent always. Now, you can take this and apply it to a podcast. We can also take this and apply it to anything in life. Have faith, right? Just trust, okay? Stay dedicated. Don't ever give up in whatever you're doing. And also just be consistent. Every single day, keep knocking away at it. That's what podcasting is. That's what storytelling is. That's what school is. That's what life is. You insert whatever you want to put in there, have faith, stay dedicated, and be consistent always, because especially in a podcast. Now, this is an educational webinar, and this is a class. So um, if your teacher is allowing for me to come back, or give another presentation for you all or be able to talk with you again, I do have a homework assignment. So like I said before, this is the craziest time you, me, your grandparents, anybody has lived through. If you were to start your own podcast, here's what I would do and I would challenge you all to do. I'm old school, so take a notebook out, write down just a few sentences, three sentences explaining what the pandemic means to you or kind of the larger implications of it as if you were telling it to someone from the future. Someone who's never read a history textbook, someone who knows nothing about this pandemic, write down three things. Read those three things over again and then summarize them. So now you got four sentences. And for me, that's about a one minute script. You know, I do news writing, I do podcast writing, writing of all kinds. 
if you were to take this four sentence COVID-19 script and take your phone, a pair of headphones, and a reason why I put a towel is because if you put a towel over your head, you stand in a closet, it contracts all the sound that you're trying to make. If there's no buzzing and all that other stuff, there's no um, ambient noise that's gonna get in the way. It's gonna sound most like going into a, a music studio. You can also put eggshells on the walls to trap sound, okay? Go into a closet, a very quiet area, and turn on a voice memo app. Y'all have y'all all have phones, mostly iPhones or whatever the case may be. Turn on the voice memo app and record yourself saying what this pandemic means to you, to someone who has no idea. Say it out loud, listen back to it, just get your script down however you want to get it down. And then once you record it, um, I want you to save it and send it to your teacher. And the next time we do this, we'll discuss what the pandemic means to you all how it has affected your lives and whether or not, you know, someone from the future would download this podcast. And I guarantee you, no one's going to believe half the things that you put in there because this, again, is the craziest time we've ever been to, uh, been through. So if your teacher's allowing me to do that and come back, I'd love to discuss how you guys get started with your podcast. And then every week you can build on that because this, this, it's not going away. We got a vaccine this week but it's not going away, unfortunately. Um, so this could be like a semester long podcast. You could take this and then apply it to the next global health crisis or take this and apply it to, you know, what Duke Ellington is doing in some of your arts classes or just create your own podcast. You guys are 16 and 17 years old right now. Why not? You know, I started my uh, first podcast when I was 20, when I was 20, you know, and I've been doing it for six years now. So, um, that is podcasting in a nutshell. That's how you start one. That's how you do it. That's how, that's why you would do one. That's how you would make it. Um, I'd love to take any questions. Um, and again, d discuss it the next time we're here, compare and contrast your stories, compare and contrast your narratives. And you can make this podcast or this homework assignment completely about you. You don't have to say there's been 300,000 people that have died um, in the US. You can say, you know, my grandmother, my uh, friend from down the street, and one of my former teachers contracted the virus. What does that mean to you? What, how, how did their lives change? Um, this is all personal narrative and storytelling. It's also a public speaking assignment. It's an English reading, writing, researching assignment um, that will, I can assure you, will at least give you some creative um, outlets and also uh, just it'll keep your mind moving. It's just critical thinking exercises that will help because y'all are looking at screens all day. So um, why not kind of just let your voice be heard, if you will? And that's it. Okay, that is he. I think he's given us a challenge class. So uh, between today and uh, when we meet on Monday, maybe some of you can. Um, uh, can can write these sentences. Can you go over those sentences again? Um, yeah, um, author, if you don't mind. Um, write down three things, sentences about the pandemic. And then go ahead and summarize whatever you're talking about. My grandmother, my teacher, and my high school um, bandmate those are your three sentences. And then you can say, summarizing that, three people in my family, three people in my close network were impacted by the largest global health crisis we've seen in a hundred years. So another way of saying it is, this is your thesis statement. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, that's why you put it at the top. That was, that's Maybe you can that. start with a, like a, with a hook, a background sentence, a bit, you know, meaning about how you're affected and everything, and then your thesis. Exactly. Um, so again, like three people in my network were impacted by a global health crisis. <laughs> and someone from the future has got to be able to understand this. Um, so first, my basketball coach came down with this virus called COVID-19 that started, uh, you know, uh, you know, my, my sophomore year of high school. And then a few weeks later, our school shut down and my teacher got it, things like that. 
So um, just make it short, a couple sentences, a paragraph, if you will. And it's a short script. If you get to like one minute, you can kind of shut it off right there. Just keep it under a minute, keep it short, simple and sweet. And then um, find a place where you can quietly record these things. I'm trying, I'm trying to take- Okay, so let's, um, let's do that as, as kind of an unofficial assignment. Although I will give you cr uh, class credit for doing that. You can email me uh, your voicemail and I will email author and invite him back um, to see what he does with, with your podcast. Maybe he'll do something special with that. Maybe so. All right, so um, with that said, I had uh, another uh, uh, guest who is actually supposed to come tomorrow um, for the other class, but she'll be coming to see you all after the holidays. So she came on by mistake, but she stayed, she uh, left me a message saying that she really enjoyed your presentation, Arthur. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, does anybody... Uh...